one of the most versatile touring bikes in the market and a great value for the money. If you are thinking of building your own Surly Bridge Club, this video is going to give you some valuable information. I'm Francisco from Bicycle Picnic, let's get into it. Chromoly 4130 Surly frames are built out of double-butted 4130 Chromoly tubes. This is the entry level for good quality tubes and is the choice for most middle-range bicycles in the market. Double-butted means that the middle section of the tubes have thinner walls which reduce the weight without compromising the strength of the frame. The weight my Surly Bridge Club size large weighs 2.8 kilograms plus 1.3 kilograms for the fork, so the frame set comes to 4.1 kilograms. To put this in perspective, I'll make a comparison with three other similar frame sets. These are all frames that are intended to be loaded and capable of touring off-road. They are not exactly in the same category, but close enough. First, the Nordist Sardinia 2 on size ML, which is very close to a large size, weighs uh, 2.75 kilos plus the fork at 1.18 kilos the frame set comes to 3.9 kilos brother cycles big bro size medium is at 2.6 kilos and 1.37 kilos for the fork so the frame set comes to 3.97 kilos but this is for the medium size so to be able to make the comparison with the other ones we increase the frames weight by 10 percent so it comes to 2.86 kilos Plus the fork, it brings the total weight to approximately 4.2 kilograms. Next frame is the Ritchie Ascent that weighs 2.4 kilograms for the size large and the fork weighs 1.125 kilos so the frame set comes to 3.525 kilos about half a kilo lighter than the other three so why is that well because the bridge club the sardinia 2 and the big pro are all built out of double butted chromoly 4130 steel tubes and the Ascent stands out with their heat-treated, triple-butted Ritchie Logic tubing. So basically, they've developed a fancier tubing to create an equally strong frame, but about half a kilo lighter than the other one. But is that half a kilo important on a touring bike anyway? Well, let's say that a complete touring bike weighs about 15 kilos more or less and you carry about 15 kilograms in luggage and let's say that you weigh about 70 kilos so the total of the bike plus the load plus the rider is around 100 kilos to make it easy so then uh, we can see that half a kilo is only 0.5 percent of the total weight so it's not really a lot in the total weight of a real touring bike considering all the factors but just out of curiosity, how much do we have to pay for saving 500 grams on a frame set? The price comparison. This is probably one of the most attractive features of the Surly Bridge Club frame set. Selling at more or less 650 euros in Europe. I actually bought it for 630 euros from this website. But let's compare. The Bridge Club frame set costs 650 euros is 4130 chromoly made in Taiwan, 4.1 kilos total weight for the frame set. The big bro frame set costs about 800 euros if we make the conversion from pounds. It's built out of 4130 chromoly made in Taiwan as well and weighs approximately 4.2 kilograms. The Sardinia 2 cost 729 euros for the frame and 249 euros for the fork. Total for the frame set 978 euros is built out of 4130 chromoly also made in Taiwan and the total weight for the frame set is 3.9 kilograms. And finally, the Ascent frame set costs 1,399 euros. It's built out of heat-treated triple-butted tubing, it's made in Taiwan as well, and it weighs 2.4 kilograms. 
a quick disclaimer here. This is not a frame set full comparison. I'm absolutely sure there are design specificities for each one of these frames that justify their prices. But in general, we can safely say that the Surly Bridge Club sits at a pretty friendly price. If we were to go deeper into this comparison, we would find that probably one of the main reasons for this is that the design is more simple. The Bridge Club has less clearance on 29 inches, the dropouts and derailleur hanger are more basic and it has no through axles. Which brings us to the next point, wheel compatibility. This bike is compatible with the traditional quick release wheel standard instead of the new and increasingly common through axle standard. This could be an interesting advantage for a touring bike because in general bike repair shops still have more replacing possibilities for quick release systems than for through axle systems. This might change in the future as through axles get more and more common, but still, this might take years. The other advantage is that having a quick release standard helps to keep the price of the frame set a little bit lower than if it was a through axle compatible frame set. Thanks, quick release. Hub spacing. The Bridge Club has a 100mm hub spacing at the front, very usual standard. For the rear hub though, things are a little bit more complex. The rear hub spacing of the Bridge Club is 138mm, which is right between two different hub standards, the 135mm and the 141 millimeters OLD over lug nut dimension. So by taking advantage of the natural flexibility of steel, the frame is able to flex a little bit to accommodate either of the two standards. Currently though, the 141 millimeters standard is less common, so you'll most likely end up using the 135 millimeters quick release rear hub which is a wheel hub standard that's been around for a long time and that's still pretty common use among bicycle shops. So you shouldn't have any trouble finding a wheel set for your frame. The other thing that you need to know is that by using a 135 mm rear hub, you won't be able to have the maximum tire clearance of this frame. So if you absolutely want to clear the maximum, you'll need to use the 141 rear wheel hub. And we're gonna get into that right now. Tire clearance. The Bridge Club has a plus tire clearance of three inches if you use 26 inches wheels or 2.8 inches if you use 27.5 inches wheels. But as I mentioned before, the only way to clear the maximum tire size without having any chain rub is by installing the 141mm rear hub plus one of these two boost crank sets. The boost setup is 6mm wider than the normal one. So I'm guessing if I'm not using a boost configuration, my tire clearance will be reduced by about 6mm. This is something I'll definitely be testing in a future video and I'll put the link somewhere here because testing is the only way to be certain. So, you can also put 28 inches wheels on this frame, but then the clearance is limited to 47 millimeters. And that's no matter the drivetrain configuration you're using, boost or non-boost, it doesn't matter. If you are looking for bigger tire clearance on 29 inches wheels, I recommend you to check the Surly Augur frame set or the Surly ECR frame set or one of the other frame sets we've mentioned, like the Nordis Sardinia 2, the Brother Cycles Big or the rich ascent from derailleur. In general, bikes are becoming less optimized for front derailleurs because the industry and many customers as well prefer one by drivetrains nowadays. But in the case of a touring bike, 
a one by drivetrain would be unthinkable, at least for me. There is not enough gear range, in my opinion. On this bike, it's still possible to install a front derailleur, but what they recommend is a combination of an adapter plus a direct mount derailleur, which I personally find too specific and expensive too, because you have to buy both the adapter and the derailleur. They recommend an adapter with 26 millimeters offset for the normal setup. This is with the 135 millimeters rear hub, plus a normal crankset and a 20 29 millimeters offset adapter for the boost configuration with 141 millimeters rear wheel hub plus a boost crankset. A bit confusing, right? If you are thinking of using the non-boost setup, then you might get away with just using a normal derailleur. Only thing, it has to be a derailleur with an integrated housing stopper like this one, because the frame doesn't have any housing stopper and also the frame has a top housing routing so the derailleur has to be top pull now i believe you could also put a front pull derailleur but that's something i'm gonna be testing in the future rear dropouts the dropouts are vertical which is optimal for a derailleur dry train if you are planning to use a roll-off internal gear hub, there are ways to get away with it with the proper adapters and chain tensioner, but honestly, I would just get a frame that's more optimized for roll-off, like the Surly Ogre, for example. Brakes. This frame is disc brake compatible with IS 51 millimeters mount that can accommodate post mount disc brakes with a simple adapter. It has a good capacity to host good size rotor diameters, 180 millimeters at the back and 203 at the front. With these diameters, you can have a very powerful braking even if you have cable pulled disc brakes. Headset. The headset is a straight exterior on 1 1 8 inch diameter and external cups. Look at the SHIS, Standardized Headset Identification System, to be sure to buy the right one. For the upper headset, this is what you're looking for, EC external cups, then 34 is the internal diameter of the head tube, and the 28.6 millimeters is the diameter of the fork steerer. Is the same as 1 1 8 inch. Then for the lower part, it's also external cup, EC 34, and then the 30 is the crown of the fork. You don't really need to measure, just check that these numbers are matching between the headset specs and the frame specs. Like for example, this is the one that I'm using, is a Ricci WCS external cup EC threadless headset. And if you look at the specifications, you'll see that you have exactly the same SHIS, upper and lower, so there you go. Seat tube. The seat post of this bicycle is the very standard 27.2 mm diameter. The frame does not have internal routing for a dropper post, but judging by the geometry you can still put one. Only thing is the cable will have to run on the outside of the frame. Accessories. The bridge club has all you need to install a front or rear rack. Also mud guards and any thin cages two on the fork and two on the down tube. Geometry. Well, first of all, for the geometry comparisons, I recommend this incredibly useful website is bikeinsights.com. So first thing, Surly Bridge Club is not suspension corrected. So here I am comparing the frame with the Brother Cycles Big Pro, which has a uh, suspension corrected geometry. And we can see the difference that the head tube on a suspension corrected geometry is usually higher and usually also shorter. This is to give uh, enough room for the suspension fork. So on the Bridge Club, you're not gonna be able to put a suspension fork. Or you might be able to, but it will change the geometry 
geometry significantly. It would put the front end of the bike too high, so it's not recommended. The Surly Bridge Club has a slightly more traditional looking main triangle. This is thanks to the fact that the frame is not suspension corrected, so the top tube has a less pronounced slope. This is perfect for fitting a large frame bag, for example. This is an excellent review of the complete bike on bypacking.com and you can see how generous the main triangle can be for fitting a full frame bag. The chain stays are relatively short for a touring bike. This is a, a comparison with a traditional touring frame, which is the Surly Long Haul Tracker. You can see the chain stays are 25 millimeters shorter on the bridge club. So that's going to make the bike feel more reactive and playful and a little bit less stable when it's fully loaded. I personally like bicycles that are more reactive so that's one of the reasons I got this frame. Another interesting thing to look at is the trail in bike geometry. Uh, this is a good indicator of the handling of the bike. In this case the numbers are closer to a touring or trekking bike more than a modern mountain bike. It means that the bridge club will be less capable to go fast down a mountain bike trail but in return it will handle much better on mixed surfaces. Not like, for example, the Sardinia, which has a more mountain bike geometry because it's more intended for a almost full off-road use. So here we can see the trail comparison between the Sardinia and Bridge Club. Be aware that the Bridge Club has been designed for flat bars. The top tube is too long to accommodate drop bars. If you're looking to install drop bars on it, you might have to downsize but this could bring you another problems like a, for example too low head tube where you'll have to stack a lot of spacers to get the handlebar to the right height if you are looking to put drop bars, I recommend you to check, for example, the Salsa Fargo or the Genesis Vagabond. Those uh, could be much better options for drop bars. So that's everything I have to say about this frame. I'll be building the frame and testing and publishing more videos about the process. Uh, I hope you find this helpful. Like and subscribe if you wish and see you next time.